Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are going to kind of do something a little bit old school, I guess you could say. Do you remember when you were little and your teacher made you trace your hand onto a piece of paper? Um, I remember doing it at like Thanksgiving and making turkeys out of it, but I kind of find myself a lot of times when I'm looking to doodle something, tracing my hand and then filling it in. Uh, and that's kind of how I'm going to take a pro the approach to this video. I'm going to trace my hand onto some EVA foam, cut it out, carve it up into shape, and then make some creepy zombie hand mask out of it like this. This was the idea. So let's build a zombie hand mask out of EVA. Let's get to building. For my hand carving, I started with a sheet of 10 millimeter foam cut into six pieces, three for each hand. Then I simply traced my template, AKA my hand, onto the top layer of foam. Disregard my right hand, I was stung by a wasp yesterday while I was mowing, which I am highly allergic to. My hand swelled up pretty big, so my right hand may be a little bit larger than the other. The show must go on. I glued up the three layers with contact cement. Notice the palm area has a third layer and the fingers don't. That's because the palm gets thicker towards the wrist. My next step will be to remove a majority of the foam around my trace marks. Just get close to the line, don't try and get on the line. The sharper the blade, the easier this step will be. Now I'm just giving myself some reference lines of areas that have indentations. The great thing about this build is that I have a 3D model right next to my build to work off of. Keep referring back to your hand as you carve. I use a rough sanding drum on my Dremel to shape the parts quickly. Pick a side and start mimicking the slopes and curves as you go. Wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while you do this because foam dust will go everywhere. You don't want it in your lungs. To get things closer to shape, I gouge out more reference lines, in this case lines on the palm. I dish out the middle of the hand and add back my palm lines as I go. The fingers work the same way, but get a bit tricky. The good thing about this material is that I can bend over fingers in any direction I need to to get to the middle of them and sand them out.
Once I have the rough shape of both hands carved out on the foam, I change attachments to a stone bit and go over all the surfaces again. This gets rid of all the rough edges and allows you to refine the shape with more precision. Each hand took me about an hour and a half to carve and shape. Now that they are all smoothed out, I want to put a little bend in them so that they will fit better around my face. It doesn't need to be a lot, so don't go crazy with the bending. Heat up an area, bend it a little past where you want it to rest, and then hold it while it cools. This also heat sets all the carved surfaces, which gets rid of rough areas left, and gets it ready for paint by closing up the cells. Now with my wood burner and a thin tip, I start carving in wrinkles and folds on my hands. I go deeper on the folds of my hands and shallow with the other details. Work slow and if it starts to get a little jagged on the burns, hit the tip with sandpaper to get rid of the layer of melted foam. Should still be wearing the respirator now because of fumes instead of dust. Now that all the lines are carved in, I am ready to glue it into place with some super glue. I mess around with finger positioning till I find an arrangement that works good on my face and I super glue it together permanently finger by finger. Usually I do the strapping last on my mask, but this one, since the inside and the outside will be finished, I go ahead and glue them on now. I am making some faux scrap metal brackets to give the illusion of how it's going to be attached onto the hand and give it a little bit of extra detail. I rough cut the pieces, bevel the edges, glue on some resin cast hex bolts, and glue a one inch elastic banding into place.
I hit it with two coats of Plasti Dip. I ended up using gray for the base instead of black, just because it's better for this light skin tone. Time for the paint job. Lots and lots of layers, probably about 12 in total. Most done with a sponge to make the skin look blotchy, and skin in general is made up of several different shades and colors. I used Platifex acrylic paint. The base was splashed on with some off-white and a little mix of pink in the next shot. I'm about at layer four or maybe five at this point and ready to put in some vein details and a little cenosis on the fingertips. I rough in where some veins go and then wait for it to dry before the next layer. Another layer of pink and off-white to make the veins look like they're underneath the skin. But you want to go light so that you don't completely get rid of the vein work. Since I am going for a zombie look on these hands, I add just a little bit of green splotches to my skin color base. Once the base color is done, I put on a layer of clear coat to protect my progress. It looks a bit cartoony at this point, but just wait for the washes here in a second. With a little watered down brown, black, and green, slather it all on with a chip brush over everything. It took me about three layers of washes before I got the effect I wanted. You just put down a layer, wipe it with a paper towel, and then wait for it to dry for the next layer. Then I went in with black and brown to dirty it up just a little bit more around some of the edges. I also painted my bracket silver and weathered them and ended up with the dark red for dried blood all around the edges and fingertips. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, extremely creepy. Um, I think it turned out pretty good, at least in terms of it does look like hands. Um, there are parts of it that could be a little bit better. The top of the hand needs to be a little more domed, so I probably needed to add an extra layer of foam on the top. Uh, but other than that, I think it's pretty awesome. The hands, because they are my size, fit my face. So you could easily just trace your own hand onto a piece of foam, cut it out, carve it up, and do a similar thing. Um, I went with some creepy, gooey disgustingness there. I gave the zombie bite mark there uh, and, and added little bolt washers so that it would hold the elastic on, but I think it's pretty cool. 
Definitely something that will keep social distancing, um, no problem. But obviously wouldn't protect you because you, there's holes, so put a mask behind it. But maybe you'll try and make one of these zombie hand masks yourself and impress your friend with your ingenuity to use your hands to cover your mouth without actually using your own hands. Yeah, inside of your elbow. Maybe you'll get some and inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. I mean, you're telling me you see this walking down the street, you're not gonna go the other way? You sure about that?